Tom Yoko? Different. And then we get one song at the end. Huh? We get one song at the end. Mm-hmm. What song is that? Why don't you get to this? Yeah, we're gonna lose it. You know, he's not gonna play more. What was the fourth song? I Surrender. Oh, maybe we can close with that one, I Surrender. That one's a good way to transition for us to go up and play. Okay. Or you guys get it in a specific order. Got to, it flows that way. It flows all together. Oh, I know. Watch his game. It's okay. I watched it. They did good. Good morning, everybody. Aloha. Aloha. All right, we're going to come inside this dinner and worship with Jesus here this morning. As we gather here, there's nothing more powerful than the presence, the promises, and the power of Jesus. So as we start here this morning, uh, before we get into worship, let's just pray that God will touch and bless every one of us. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for this day that you have made. We are so so thankful for the gift of life that we have. We thank you, Lord God, for the help that we have. We just thank you for Jesus, you being our Lord and our Savior. So Jesus, we open our homes to you. We open our hearts to you this morning. We say, hey, come on, come and touch us and bless us. And Father, we just pray for just a hedge of protection. We pray for hope, help, and healing upon all of us. Especially our local boys that are out there representing Hawaii on the National Football League or uh, the college arena, Father. We just 
pray your just your blessings, your healing upon uh, Billy Gabriel, uh, keep Tua healthy, uh, be with Mackenzie Milton, and be with uh, Marcus Mariotto, Lord God. We just pray blessings because they are ambassadors of Aloha, missionaries sent into the football arena to touch thousands of people in the city and across the country and the world. But Lord God, here this morning, we just pray, touch us and bless us, fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray here, we pray now, as we worship you, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In Jesus' name we pray, God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right, let's worship Jesus here this morning. We want to declare His praise and His glory all over the world. This is where the islanders get to shine. Glory, glory, glory. We give you glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. You are the mighty God. tonight by declaring his glory in Hawaiian. And now let's sing it in Samoan.
don't want to hear anymore Teach me to listen I don't want to see anymore Give me a vision That you could move this heart To be set apart I don't need to recognize The man in the mirror And I don't want to trade your plan For something familiar I can't waste a day I can't stay the same I wanna be different I wanna be changed Till all of me is gone And all that remains Is a fire so bright The whole world can see That there's something different So come and be I don't want to spend my life stuck in a pattern And I don't want to gain this world but lose what matters and So I'm giving up everything because I want to be different I want to be changed till all of me is gone And all that remains is a fire so Something different to come and be different. Oh, I know that I am far from perfect, but through you, the cross still says I'm worth it. So take this beating in my heart and come and finish what you started. When they see me, let them see you. Cause I just wanna be. Thank you. 
to start here. We just want to be real, open, honest, and transparent. We just sit as if you know the secret. That's it. So we just save us from ourselves, save us from our hurts, having to hang up, so we can find hope, help, and healing in you, so we can be radically different, Lord God. May we talk differently. May we walk differently. May we bounce differently, Lord God. May, so that the world will see, not us, but you are in us. So Lord God, we just, yeah, we just want to worship you this morning, and we just want to start off this time just in prayer, in worship. And Lord, like the song says, uh, we, we, we make ourselves nothing so that you be the only thing and everything in us. So Lord God, we just pray this for our hope filled morning. Give us the hope to hope. Give us the hope to hope. Help us, Lord God, to do your will so that the world will see the light in us, which is Jesus Christ. So thank you for this awesome and amazing time of worship. We bring all these things. Jesus,
we don't have to wait for food distribution uh, for food. We, did, we do have a food pantry here every Monday morning from 8 to 10, and we've got an amazing leader, the quinoa layer, that yeah, just really benefits the whole uh, person, whole family. You're seriously, if you guys know anybody who is in need, please get the word out for our food distribution and our food pantry, because we want to make sure that we can be able to be a blessing for our families, our own families, and our community. So, anything else? Yeah. Good. I'll tell you, it's like a comedy show for you. Like, that's what the Holy Spirit does, right? It feels the same thing. God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. We need vision. We need vision. We're living in a place that if there's no vision, people perish. And in light of a lot of the restrictions and so forth, we've got to be creative on how we can reach our community. So, and that's all of you. So, we pray that God will bless all of us as we gather here this morning. All right. Do you want to pray for us? Or? Yeah, let's pray. Yeah, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord. And it is not a joke, Father, <laughs> to be up here. But we're just filled with your joy. We're filled with your zeal, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And the word, the summit was downloading as we were worshiping this. Come and fill this place. As we seek your face, come and fill our hearts this morning, Father. We know that we are broken vessels in need of a Savior. And Father, as I just lift up our tithes and offering to you, Lord, this is just an act of worship that we do to you, to, to you, Father God, to just trust you in this area of our life, Lord. But we know that you don't need it, Father, but in every area we need to be tested. So we just pray, Father, as we come together collectively, that you will just bless our tithes and offerings. Use it to expand. Your kingdom is ever expanding, Lord God. And we are a big part of it, Lord. So we thank you, Father, for financial stewardship that we do so well here at NPC. And Lord, we just ex are so excited to see what you do in the next seven days in 96792 and to the ends of the earth as you use your excellencia in such a powerful, magnificent way. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. It's all safe. Amen. 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 Thank you. Great job. All right. And then also, uh, if you guys have any prayer requests um, or praise reports, we've got those yellow cards by the time the offering box is in the back of the sanctuary by that door. Please write it down because we will start praying for you as soon as you get it uh, today. And we want to make sure that all of your families are covered in prayer. And for those of you at home, first time you're watching service at home, like, how do I give? There's a button there right there on the Facebook in the chat. Click that button. It's a safe, secure way that you can give to the Lord so that God will continue to multiply your sufficient loads. He will multiply all that we have. And it's important that we give everything to Jesus because when we hold on to it, it's going to rot. But whenever we give it to Jesus, it's going to take it, it's going to bless it, it's going to multiply it, use it to be able to change the world. And how do we change the world, especially in faith, uh, tough times like this? We have to ask. We're, we're, we're talking about faith in tough times. We started the discussion about this last week, we want to build on that. Having faith in tough times. It's easy to have faith on Sunday morning when things are good. But can we have faith when everything starts falling apart in our life? That's the test. So one of the pictures I want to give you is like The Avengers, one of my favorite movies, because I believe it's a prophetic movie, the first one. Um, we are all God's superheroes. Listen, the world needs heroes. The world needs heroes. They look peak. They need, they, they're looking for people that, that, that can overcome adversity. And all of us are superheroes. And why do I say that? Because we are filled with power, with the power of the Holy Spirit. To do what? To do amazing things. To do what, the, what we worshiped in, in the last song. So we got to do that. But as heroes, we also have an enemy. And that's why we got to realize we are living in an evil day. The gates of hell is a real physical place. We are dealing with principalities and powers of this world. And the gates of Hades are, 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 are being manifested. Look around us. Listen to the news and so forth. That's why, again, the world needs heroes. You know, but as superheroes, when you look at the Avengers, they had enemies. And even us. For all of us, we have enemies. The question is, who is your enemy? And I'm asking all these questions to set us up for this morning's teaching. Who is your enemy? Think about that. 
Is it the president? Is it the Taliban? Is it ISIS? Is it the mayor? Is it the governor? Or is there another enemy? The true enemy that we should be focused on? Um, and are you angry with them? And if so, why? And we're going to be talking about anger. Because anger is one letter shy of danger. And why anger is so dangerous. And if you're angry with people, then the question is, where's the battlefield? Is it at the state capital? Is it at the national capital, the, the, the nation's capital? Is it outside Lieutenant Governor's home? The building he lives in? Well, let's be real. Let's be real. Come on. Or, or, or is it at the vaccination clinics like we had a couple of weeks ago and Senator Corbelli is there and then we push him and shove him because we don't agree with the poison that people... No, I'm, I'm, I'm asking real questions because the way it looks like every place is the battlefield. Wherever I go, that's the battlefield. But from a biblical and spiritual perspective, who is the enemy and where is the battlefield? And if we're fighting a battle, then what kind of tools do we have? And I want to ask, you know, what are your relationship tools that your parents passed down to you? Is it a sasa stick? Is it, is it, uh, for me, was anything that my, was it nailed down? My mom would pick them up and fly them. Can be one sipa, can be pots and pans, can be one stick, can be a belt, whatever it was in both the down, that was fair game. So I thought that's the way I raised, that's how I raised my kids. My favorite one is what sticks. Right? What's your favorite relationship to passed down to your parents? What kind of relationship tools did your parents pass down to you? What's your favorite? And here's another question. How's it working? Is it working? You know, we're moving forward into the 21st century, but sometimes we still can't be king men. I'm talking about myself. Right? Is it, how's it working? Is it working? If not, it's time to upgrade our relationship. It's time to upgrade our relationship. Because did Jesus not, did Jesus not say, love the Lord and God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love each other? Then we should be famous for love. How's that going in this evil day? How's that going in tough times? But every evil day is followed by the day of the Lord. We're living in the days of Jubilee. We are living in victorious times, even in these tough times. Because the ecclesia is alive. It is not stagnant, it is not dead, it is thriving, it is alive and well because the ecclesia is alive. child of God and go out there and go like the people of God. That's what it is. Every evil day is followed by a day of jubilee. Every evil day is followed by a day of the Lord. But it's tough time. How do we do it? See, the ecclesia is God's solution for today's crisis. The ecclesia is, is God's solution for today's crisis. I bought this book a couple of years ago and it took me months to read it. Really, it, it really changed my perspective of what church should be, according to what Jesus said when he said, Matthew 16, I will build my ecclesia, the gates of hell cannot, shall not go down for them. And then we at Ecclesia need to rediscover God's instrument for global transformation. And when I read it, it didn't make sense. But but that this tool, this teaching that we're going to receive, that we're going to is so that we, turn to somebody next to you and tell them that's you, so that we can be the change, so we can be different, and we can be solutionaries to be God's solutions for today's crisis. Does that make sense? Yes. So, Ecclesia Rise. Ecclesia Rise. I, I guess 60 says, darkness will cover the earth, but rise and shine because the glory of the Lord is upon us. But I'm falling down. It doesn't matter how many times you fall. It matters how many times you get back up that counts. So we need faith in tough times. And, and you 
you know, I use the, the picture of the illustration because I believe we're better together, we're stronger together. This represents the body of Christ. A bunch of different, unique, talented, gifted individuals. When you watch the movie the first half, they couldn't win the battles out there in the world because they couldn't even get along. They couldn't even get along. They were so different, so diverse. Like, why, why can't you get nice? Because I get mad, and when I get mad, that's when I'm good, right? Or I'm going to bring the hammer, right? And they're all like, oh, that's not, and they all argue with each other, and they couldn't change the world because they were busy fighting against each other and trying to figure differences. But the second half of the movie, they realized that we need our butt together. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of losing. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of losing. I want to go outside and give some, get some, you know, and just beat some, right? So that requires them to lean on each other, to depend on each other, to come together. That's a prophetic illustration of the endless. Coming together. So that then, only then, and then the, 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 the initiative of the adventure was to bring Nick Fury. And so it's, 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 yeah, the marvel came up with it, but it's, I think it's so prophetic for the church. It was to bring together a bunch of remarkable individuals to do something that they can never do on their own. To come together to win, work as a team, to win the battles that they never could on their own. And that is a picture of the endless To have faith in the tough times. So we're going to be talking about the heavenly places because that's where the battle wins. So the, the book on spiritual warfare is the book of the Ephesians, because that's a church that actually transformed an area. When you look at the book of Ephesians in chapter 1, 3, 120, 2, 6, 3, 10, 6, 12, it talks about the heavenly places. And we're going to break this down in just a little bit so we have a better understanding of where the spiritual battle is and how we can engage, fight, and win in changing the spiritual climate out there. So here's the first thing, number one. God seated the heavenly places with spiritual blessings, the heavenly places. So the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, 3, says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. Turn to somebody next to you. They say, that's us, that's us. God has blessed us with some spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. Oh, no? Oh, oh, oh! Oh, I'm sorry. God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. I looked that up in the Greek, the, the Greek, the Hebrew, Tongan, Samoan, Polynesian, Hawaiian, Jamaican, and that word every means every. But I have to check them out. When you share God's word, you gotta, you gotta make sure you're good, right? So, so God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing, not some, in the heavenly places in Christ. Well, the problem with that is we couldn't access that prior to Christ because we were in the cosmic grave. That sin held us back from accessing that. And prior to Jesus Christ coming and dying and raising from the dead, no man could have access to that. Because of that, the wages of sin was death. But yet God did plant every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. Well, how in the world do we access that? Thanks for asking that's why Jesus Christ sent his, uh, God sent his son, Jesus, who descended into the lower parts of the earth. And he was seated at the right hand of God, far above any other ruler, power, and dominion. He put all things under the, uh, in subjection under his feet and gave him uh, authority as head over all things for you. The Ecclesia, for you. So you can be God's superhero. So how did it happen? So Jesus Christ, born of a virgin king, he had three years of ministry, he died, he was put in a grave, and the lords of the Lord, the devil and the demons rejoiced. We got him, he's a bitch, he's a fraud. He said he's a king of kings, he's a lord of the Lord. He's dead, he has been crucified. We locked him up and we have power and authority. But on the third day, on the third day, on that day, God raised him from the dead. Lifted him up, the grave was empty, the tomb was empty, and today he's seated in the highest places, interceding for all of you, our families, and our communities. And it, 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 it drove the devil crazy. He, the devil got mad at his demons. He said, What happened? What happened? When the people were there, they were fighting, they were beating, and the devil had, he had complaints like, No way, how could this happen? And then he went to God and he said, How, how, how did it happen? How did So the gates of hell has been broken because of 
Jesus Christ did. That's the second thing. Now, here's the third thing and the good news for all of us today. Because of that, step number three, he executed the largest transfer of building materials in the universe. In other words, Ephesians chapter 2, 6 says this. And because of what Jesus Christ, all of us have been raised up because we believe in our heart, confess with our lips that Jesus Christ is Lord, raised up with him, we are raised up with him, and we are seated with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? Now we have access to all the spiritual blessings, every spiritual blessing. Now the devil has made your complaint. He says, why is Richard part of the church? Why is Alec part of the church? How come Alita is mighty now? How come Judy is not doing drugs anymore? How come Kimo is not angry anymore and he's being worship? I don't get it. I have thousands of complaints. I'm going to go to the Father God and go check my complaints. So the devil goes before God. I have complaints. Not only did Jesus live for the faith, but all these local boys have been transformed, especially out of Calais. I don't get it. They were my favorite guys. They used to be on my side. They were working for me. I don't get it. How did it happen? God says, because of grace. The devil said, how come I never heard of grace? Because I hid it in my blood, Jesus Christ. And when you crucified him, when you nailed him, it leaped out of him that world to access to grace. <laughs> Communion, we're receiving God's grace. Because of God's grace. Not that we deserve it, because we don't. And there's nothing which you can ever do to be able to receive a free gift because of the love of the Father for the world, for sinners, to be redeemed from the gates of hell that means. building materials to be the church, not the building, but people coming together as one. To show the devil he lost. He did his pretenses. This God did this in order that the natural wisdom of God might be known through the church so that you guys would see God's manifest wisdom and grace through the church. To who? To the rulers and principalities and authorities in the heavens. As we are raised up, we no longer love the world, but we have been set apart for the power of the world to change the world. And number four is this. He established the church as an example to the principalities of the world. That song that we worship is so fitting, so profound, so that we will be different. So that we will be different. We no longer live our life with hope, hurts, habits, and hanging. We live a life filled with of the beginning and the world will see that we are transformed because of his blood and his grace. Here's a couple of things that we need to understand as we look at the book of uh, Ephesians. So God placed everything underneath the feet of Jesus to the lowest of the lowest to the grave. God raised him up as the head of the church. The devil cannot attack the feet of Christ. The devil cannot attack the head of Christ. What the devil is going to go for is the body of Christ. To divide the body like the Avengers. So they cannot work together. And so that's why, and that's why one of the things that, that God wants to do, I mean the devil wants to do, is rip upon marriages. Because the marriage goes over the families. He wants to rip apart the families because if the family goes, they go to the church. If the church goes, then there goes the school. The schools go, then there goes the future. Because the schools are up to the you see the chain reaction from marriages and families and the church. You take the church down, they go to society. The church today is so, so important to be God's solution for today's crisis. Let's not waste this crisis. Let's lean on God and move forward. Learn to be the ecclesi and walk to change the world. But I don't like the mandates. I don't like the vaccinations. Ephesians chapter 6, 12 says this. We wrestle not against vaccinations. Oh, I'm sorry. If we wrestle not against flesh and blood. 
not against standing. So we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the powers, against the forces of darkness, against the spiritual forces and wickedness in the heavenly places. That's where the battlefield is. The battlefield is there, but you see, like, you know, uh, there's power of darkness, there's hopelessness, there's vaccinations, anti-vaccinations, mandates, Afghanistan, you know, the Democrats and Republicans, all those things of the world the devil sent, sent to divide the church. So the church must engage, fight, and win for control of the heavenly places. And how in the world we do that? Well, let me share the devil's common strategy before we get into it. One is the enemy's common strategy is this. He understands now that Jesus is the head of the church in position of supreme authority. It is no other name but the name of Jesus who is the head of the church. He also realized that the devil and his demons are under his feet. So he didn't realize that the devil and his demons got that. But if they attack the church, then the church will give the devil jurisdiction. And the church has given the devil jurisdiction, if I may be so bold to say that. See, one barrel, again, you can't attack the head, you can't attack the feet. The one barrel is the body of Christ. To divide the body, to get angry, and give the devil jurisdiction. How in the world did the church, it is funny, God from Adam and Eve gave them authority. They sinned, they gave authority back to the devil. Jesus Christ came to die so that the church would get authority again. But as the church gets divided and get angry, we give authority back to the devil. How in the world does it happen? Ephesians chapter 4, 26 says this. How does the church give? And the church, again, is, is the different parts of the body. How do we give the devil jurisdiction? The Bible says, be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun set upon your wrath, least you give the devil an opportunity. That word opportunity is jurisdiction. When you get angry, you give the devil an opportunity, which means jurisdiction to exercise authority we give to the devil through anger. You get angry in your marriage state, because your marriage is Sayonara. You open the door for the devil to come in and take over. You get married uh, angry at your kids, and that's what happens. Whenever we get angry at people in our family, we give the devil open doors, open access for us. Or, or the, the thing is, we don't even see it because we're not in church. We're not in a church service. The devil doesn't need a church service to move. All he needs is somebody with a heartbeat and some blood flowing, and he will go to attack, steal, kill, and destroy you. Why? Because you remind him of the image of God, because you are made in the image of God, and he hates that. He hates your family and he hates your marriage because he reminds the devil of a perfect community the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and he can't stand that. So he can't attack God, the Father, the head. He cannot attack the, the feet. He came in after each and every one of us to get us angry so that he will have an opportunity to have jurisdiction and exercise authority and dominion over us. And he knows, he knows that we're struggling with anger. So we go out there, we try, try, to, try to cast him out of our families, our schools. He's laughing and says, you have no authority because you gave me the keys to your family because you're still mad at your wife, you're mad at the kids, you're mad at the mayor, you're mad at the governor, you're mad at everybody. No, God, not even hear me at first because you're disconnected. There's no signal right now. He knows that. That's how the church gives the devil jurisdiction. We give him the opportunity. Again, go back. What is anger? Anger is true without grace. We go right back to grace. Oh, but we got to tell him the truth. But yeah, but he's without grace. Jesus didn't go with truth first. He went with grace. That's how we neutralize the devil. And oftentimes we want to be like religious Pharisees, religious Sadducees, and use the truth, use the truth, and be able to pick up rocks and stone people. Jesus said, yeah, that's the first person here. You never sin through the first rock. We make all kinds of excuses, but the fact of the matter is, there's no grace. Remember, it's grace that set us free. It's 
grace. What is grace? Unmerited favor. Favor, grace. Not the truth. The truth is this. The wages of sin is death. That's the truth. But grace, ah, I love Richard. I'm a guy for him. I love Richard. It wasn't nails that held Jesus to the cross. It was love. It was grace. He demolished the devil and the demons and the gates of hell because of grace. So we get angry when we hold back grace. And oftentimes we go into meeting conversation. Whatever it is. With a list of everything that went wrong. That's the truth. But it's from grace. And the devil loves the truth. That's why when you look at the Sadducees and the Sadducees, let's scold that lady because we've got our butt naked. She was shacking up. She deserved to be sinned. So because she's a sinner. Jesus said, yeah, there's the first person here with all the rules and regulations that never break them to the first stone. You see, oftentimes we go in truth for no grace. Grace. Anger is truth. Grace connects before it corrects. Oftentimes we want to correct without coming. Grace. How do we give the devil jurisdiction on an unpack this thing? Is this good? Can I make it sense? Yeah. You wish your family member or your boss or somebody else was here? Because that has to be you, right? God, it should be in here! Yep, I'm already saying, hey, come on, come on! Do it now! Wait for now! The mess is real! The trigger, the trigger, the trigger um, to without grace is unwholesome word. Unwholesome word is what gives the devil an opportunity. Ephesians 4 29 says this that no, I look at the no in Greek, Hebrew, some one tongue, in Chinese, Japanese, Okinawan, Asian, Chinese. No pain say. No. Let no unwholesome word proceed out of your mouth, but only that which is good for edification. According to the need of the moment. Moment. What moment? Tough times. Tough times. When things get tough. Say that so that when we hear it, so it's it, so that you will give grace. Oh, there's that word again, grace. So that you give grace to those who hear it. Who are those? Those that you disagree with. Those who make you angry. Those people that make you mad, angry, upset. Let the words that you speak be good for building up. So that you can give grace. The grace that you receive from Jesus, you extend that to them. Because a trigger for giving the devil an opportunity is a what is edification? What is that? Here's a couple of scriptures. 1 Corinthians 12, 31. Just before 1 Corinthians 13, Paul says to the church in Corinth, so you should earnestly desire the most helpful gifts. So 1 Corinthians 12 talks about the different gifts. But he said we must burn. We must burn with this desire for the most helpful gift. And he ends the chapter on that note. But after 12, there's 13. In 1 Corinthians 13, he talks about love. What is the most helpful gift? It's love. Love. And then Paul goes on in uh, chapter 14, verse 3, that those who prophesy should speak words who strengthen, encourage, and comfort. When you edify someone, it should strengthen them, it should encourage them, and it should comfort them. Now, how do you know if, if, if that's the right thing? Paste it. And if you don't like it, don't say it. Yeah, you know, like when you cook, you taste before you serve. Same thing with the word. To the people who make us angry, taste it before you serve it. If you don't like it, don't serve it. Don't say it. The words that we speak to edify should strengthen, encourage, comfort. And then Paul goes in uh, 1 Corinthians 14 5, he said this to the church in Corinth I wish all of you. Why is that? 
so we don't give the devil jurisdiction over Corinth. Or we don't give the devil jurisdiction over Nanakui. Or we don't give the devil jurisdiction over the federal building, the DOE buildings, or whatever buildings we occupy during the week, or especially our homes. So that's why the words that we speak should be filled with edification, that will strengthen, encourage, comfort, and fill with grace so we can take that jurisdiction. So here's a, a cup of a, like a cancer. When you give the devil an opportunity, there's a number of brains. It starts with unwholesome words, and then we start to uh, become bitter, not better. All of us should become better, not bitter, but because of anger, we get bitter, not better. And then we got wrath and anger, clamor, slap, and then it starts to spread. And then we give the devil more jurisdiction. We give him more because of unwholesome words. And here's something that we need to realize. The devil wants to attack us. He used fiery darts. The Bible says that, right? The fiery dart the devil is firing against us is dangerous, it's divisive, and it's deadly. It can destroy our marriage with them. But, as dangerous as it is, fiery darts are only effective if they land on combustible material. It's only, it's only effective if it's if it lands in combustible material. What combustible material is that? If our hearts are filled with anger. It'll stick. In fact, it's a, like a heat sinking missile. The devil launches it. As long as we arrow, that 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 arrow, that fiery dart will hone in on that anger. And it'll stick. Anger gives the devil jurisdiction, right? Be angry if you not sin, because if not, we'll give the devil our opportunity to jurisdiction, right? So that's one thing that we need to realize. The second thing is division. Fractures give him power to destroy the inner perimeter. Whether it's our marriage, whether it's a relationship with our kids, it could be our co-worker, it could be the church, wherever you go, wherever it is that you may be, you just need a peace to that workplace that's even those two things are what make the fiery darts effective. Only if they land on them was one there. One is anger and one is evil. Not that anybody can relate with that, right? But here's a, here's, a, here's a question. It's a time for us to reflect on this morning's teaching. Have we given room to the devil through anger in the last seven days since shutdown? Since COVID. In fact, you know what? Social distancing has been around even before COVID 19. We've been doing it for our families. We've been doing it in government. We've been doing it in politics. Yeah, even before COVID 19, we, mankind, created social distance because of that. So, what have you given the devil room during anger? Number two, has our unity been breached? Has the relationship strained between you, your, your parents, your marriage, your children, your family members? Do a heart check. Unless you love giving a devil jurisdiction, do a heart check so you can take that jurisdiction from the devil. Number three is prayer the trial for, for everything. Do we trust God fully? The Bible teaches us trust in the Lord with all your heart, regardless of what happened to you, regardless of what they did to you, regardless of what the setbacks of disappointment. Trust in the Lord and the Lord alone with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. I don't get it. They deserve this, they deserve that. I So who's responsible for giving the devil jurisdiction? Some, some great questions for us to think about. And if you rest it, we'll be praying for you guys as we end the service. The church must engage. We must engage in the enemy and, and for control of the heavenly places. But remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. The rulers, but, but against rulers, powers, and forces, and darkness in this evil place, in the heavenly. So the real enemy is not 
could put people on this. The real enemy is the death. The real enemy is not in the state capitol, or not outside the Pentagon and Josh Dean's office, not at the next vaccination clinics and all of that. They're not the enemy. That's not the battle problem. The battle problem is in heaven. We've got to do that. I've been in a couple of meetings um, with, with different leaders talking about this topic, this issue of things that are relevant, and, and they've been saying, oh, so thanks for sharing this. Oh, so easy to forget. Yeah, but when we're watching too much Fox News, CNN News, we're not reading the good news and becoming the good news. That's why I believe my whole heart, our mission to show the world the love of my father and the ecclesia, this teaching for those of you students are in the in the uh, training. You guys are so, so blessed for us as a church. I'm finding one that's supposed to go away to learn this. So good. Because it's a way of thinking of Christ like opposed to controversy. Because we waste not against flesh and blood, but the principalities of this evil world. So that's what we need to understand the whole book of uh, Ephesians. I'm just giving you a snapshot. There's different type of divisions in the book of Ephesians. There's ethnic divisions between Jews and Gentiles. There's denominational divisions between all the saints. There's ministerial uh, divisions between the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, pastors, and teachers who don't understand each other. They're like the first half of the Avengers they, they can't, they can't get along, right? Because it's so different. And then there's there's a gender thing about husbands and wives. There's an age thing about parents and children. And then there's a marketplace for reconciliation between man and his ways. We gotta be able to address all of that reconciliation before before we put on a form of God and go out and fight the good fight. Because the God of peace, the, the, the one most important uh, uh, armor is is the, the shoes, the shoes of peace. Because it is peace that will crush Satan under your feet. A lot of times we go down there, armor up, and we get anger in our hearts, and the devil's laughing. My dark and I'm just right through that because I know you got anger in your heart. So we've got to learn what these uh, things are, and we got to move. We, as God's ecclesia, need to move towards reconciliation in all these areas. So a couple of things we're going to look at ethnic is for reconciliation, not just Jews and Gentiles. Right now, Black lives, white lives, Asian hate going across our country, right? This issue between Micronesians, why they're here, they're taking over our communities, all of that. Our whites feel like they're left out because everybody get more treatment than them, right? I mean, we get all the hurt all the way around. But we've got to work towards ethnic reconciliation because the most important race is the human race. Right? So we've got to be able to deal with that. Ethnic reconciliation. The other thing is denominational reconciliation with all the saints. And that's why I wanted to be the first pastor in the state of Hawaii to get licensed by um, Foursquare, the Missionary Church, Assemblies of God, the Catholic Chapel, the Baptist, and the Catholics. Because I think they all got issues. Because there's so many things that divide us, but Jesus is the one that needs to be united. And we need to learn how to love one another. Never mind talking about our theological difference because the main scripture is love God, love one another. But I'm still friends with them and we still meet together and all of that because it is so important. We did that here in Anakuli to bring the, 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 the pastors and the people together. So we've got to work for that honor and honor the different teachings and honor the different churches and honor the different uh, denominations. We've got to pray for them because they're not the enemy. The devil is the enemy. So you see how we can easily turn against each other? And but that's what the devil wants us to do. And that's why here in 96792, uh, it was a hub for, for many places across the islands. The pastors got together years ago to bring unity, united in prayer, and all of that. These guys are from different denominations, but we love God. We don't all agree, uh, but we love each other. We love God. And that's how you take that jurisdiction in a community when the pastors can come together and do that, and we need to do that now more, starting in Anakuri, and in the west side, moving on top of it, bring them, because all this mobbing and all these issues, that's, it's not a political problem, it's not an educational problem, it's not a racial problem, it, everything starts with a spiritual problem. And it starts with us bringing unity together with other churches. Uh, ministerial, again, you saw some of these guys in the picture, my dear friends, they're apostles, prophets, evangelists, we all know, and all different gifts. We don't get along because we want to take that jurisdiction. And then marriage, husbands and wives, now we get husbands and husbands, we got wives and wives. We are all over the place, right? But 
we got to pray for our coming. It's the world we live in. Come on. I put it up there because it is the world. But, you know, even though we get same sex couples now that are married, husband, husband, wife, they are not the enemy. They need reconciliation. It's the kindness of God that leads people to repentance. So we shouldn't be attacking them. And then family reconciliation, right? Parents and children. It's the hearts of the parents to the children. Hearts of the children to the parents. If not, God's going to smite the land with a curse. You want to know why the land's cursed? Right there. Right there. So parenting is important. And that's why we're, we're launching different ministries to infiltrate primary uh, government and other nonprofit organizations, taking biblical principles, uh, and taking this into the workplace, and we're seeing transformation. Uh, and I'll just admit it that sexually, uh, sexually exploited children, that's why we want to know if we will run up for. We're going to get our kids back, but we also need mentors. And that's why we create more mentors, and for those of you that wanted to, but you can't keep praying. Keep praying for our mentors, keep praying. We're going to get our children back. See, David was a great shepherd. He's a great Christian. He's a great leader. When the lions and bears came, he didn't let them take them. He beat them. And then when they tried to grab one, he would go get his stuff back. See, the ecclesia need to go get our stuff back. We need to go get our kids back. We need to go get our schools back. We need to go get our blocks back. We need to get that society. We cannot be let the lies and affairs come and be okay with that. We gotta go get it back. So it has to be with a heart. Does it make sense? So that's the family part. And with that, uh, we we brought in we brought in um, Anella. Her, her, her daughter was was sold by her boyfriend to sex traffickers, and the sex trafficker used her for about five months, ex sexually exploited her. FBI found Anella's daughter, uh, Kamai, and the agent called Anella and says, we found your daughter, thank God, we need you to do this. When she comes home, don't ask her anything. But I want to go, trust us, and don't ask her. What do I do with this lover on she came here on this day, said to all of us, she didn't know how to love her daughter on condition. She realized that the problem wasn't the boyfriend that told her to traffic me. It wasn't the traffic, but the root of the problem, her daughter running away, was her parents. And now, him and I was on a phone with them and a call with them, they said, that was the best thing that ever happened. What? Your daughter being trapped was the best thing that ever happened? I said, yeah, but well, why? Because if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be so connected to it's healing, it's reconciliation, unconditional love and acceptance. Let's go back to the LGBT community. Uh, I, I love, I love uh, uh, all people. And I, I don't have to judge anybody because I get choked issues myself. Uh, this is Hina, love Hina, our parents, our, our uh, I love. Uh, and uh, I was asked to speak at uh, uh, a funeral service and the family told me I was going to be the only, only straight person speaking. I says, are you going to still do it? Yeah, shoot, I'm going to go. Really? Tackle my lap. He says, are you still going to do this? Yeah, of course. What you going to say? I said, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> and all the time, the asked me the other day, Pastor, how do you talk to people? I don't know. It's not a cookie cutter. We may not want anyone understanding the trust in the Lord. I said, God, I'm, I'm there. God, you got to work. You got to give it to me. God. <laughs> I've never been in the same place. And, uh, uh, who was that? The passed away? China. China, China was loved by, by the number of the, the different groups that never get along. But, oh, Peter told me, Pastor, I hope you know what you're into. I said, I have no idea. And then Peter told me, well, we get all different groups that don't get along. But China was loved by all of them. So tonight, all of them will be here. So I'll be praying for you. I said, okay, no pressure. Thank you. <laughs> And then I go up there, I go up there, hey, I, I turn to somebody next to you and tell them I love you, there's, there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> See, because they don't believe that, that they can be loved. And I said, no, seriously, you don't get started if you turn to somebody and tell them God loves you, because they never heard that. Nobody told them that God loved them. So I started off that service, turn to somebody next to you and tell them God loves you, there's nothing you can do about it. You got love in the head and you got to on the scripture, I make a change. Okay, power it, power it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna 
right out there and I went into serious mode. Hey, you know what? I heard I was going to be a funny straight person speaking to my cricket. You can get crickets in Africa. Or cricket. Yeah, I heard I was going to be a funny straight person speaking here tonight. I said, hey, listen, I'm married to my wife, Mark. We spot a time when she was like down higher than the few. I've been married. I've been married 25 years in a row. You know, in a row, same person. I love her more. I'm like, I gotta confess. I gotta confess. I just gotta get this on my chest. I've been born into the world. Um, I'm not straight. Issues. <laughs> right? I'm not, I'm, hello? I'm not straight, for the record, I am everybody on the agents. I'm, I'm cooking. I said that. Is he not a pastor? Hello? I'm cooking. Let's be honest with yourself. The only straight person most of the time is Jesus. Everybody else crooked, China knew that. China knew he was going to come face to face with the living God. He judged for everything in China and he worked with God and asked Jesus Christ into the heart to cleanse and give a new creation and all that. Now, because of that, find salvation in Christ Jesus, sitting in the heavenly realms and all of that. And you can have the same thing tonight. If you want this, I'll be praying this prayer pray after me and a bunch of people give their hearts to the Lord. It's just that kind of reconciliation. Poor way to judge people. We are about to share the good news to be more different and difficult. One of the things I'm learning, my third time to the FRC accelerator, is acceptance versus approval. And I'm going to hit on this because all of us need to learn to accept people but not approve of their choices. Jesus accepted that lady at the well. But we should shut it up with a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Accepted her as a sinner, but not agreeing or approving of the sin. The lady that committed adultery, uh, he accepted her, but not approving of her choices in her lifetime. Peter, his best disciple, screwed up three times, but still went looking for him, accepting him. He said, dude, what are you doing? I went back fishing. Do you love me? I get back in the game. He asked the second question the second time, Peter, do you love me? No, you know I do. Get back in the game. I accept you. I don't want to prove what you did, but I accept you. I need you to change the world. He asked him the third time, says, Peter, do you love me? No, you're killing me. You know I do. Well, let's roll. Get back up. Roll up your sleeve. Rather the voice and let's change the world. Come on. That's what acceptance versus approval is. We need to learn that. We need to master that. That it is difficult. It is possible. It is spiritual to accept people who hurt you but not approve of what they did. And people be a favor when we were running home for the morning uh, with the Hill Missionary Church. She said, you want to call who's in the room. When you leave with home for the corner, you must. You, she said that you don't have to love what people say. You don't have to love what people do, but you have to love people. So because this is the foundation for us to take back jurisdiction and authority from the devil, we need to learn to accept people without proving of them. Does it make sense? So it starts with our families. If you're out there in the marketplace, it's not just pastors doing slaves. We can look at this whole issue of PBT, the dumping, landfills. We got Democrats versus Republicans. We got politicians versus us, the people. We got some politicians, not like our uh, our politician, like Stacey Eli. She treats everybody like somebody because she's a daughter of God. But there's other people in office that really looks down at people. They talk down to people and all of that. So you got all these divides, politicians versus the people, right? That's creating these divides. You got the Department of Education versus the parents taking away parental rights and all of that, especially Christian parents. And Christian teaching and all of that. Hey, keep the Bible, keep the Bible out of school, keep the prayer out of school and all of that. You got the divide going on. You got HPV versus professional agitators versus the community. You got not a vaccinated, unvaccinated, those who support mandates, those who support opposed mandates, all in the family, all in the churches, all the stuff in the marketplace, causing all kinds of division. That's why we need to move towards reconciliation. That's why we move towards working with the school. With a former complex parent superintendent, and hopefully I get to meet the new one. I'll work with them, continue to make our connection with them, uh, with the schools, because we, they, we we've got to be a blessing to our schools, because they're not the 
the enemy. That's why we, we, we help get over $100,000 to challenge day to prevent suicides right up in here in the road. That's why we reconcile with the police department. Thank God again for Eva Lani, who is here. Beautiful MSW, Jody, uh, uh, sharing with you this information, encouraging me to go out there to meet the leadership of the police department to reconcile with the police department because they're not the enemy. That's not the battleground. The enemy is the devil. Uh, and the enemy is in the heavenly realm. That's why when we got the word from the professional agitators, we're going to call to come here in Hawaii. Uh, after burning down all that stuff on the mainland, we got word, we got confirmation. And how stupid is the devil to come into my room? I said, hell no, not on my watch. Hell no. But I didn't go out there with anger. I was out there with our representative Eli. We were out there with the spiritual Romy Romy. We met the, uh, the organizer, the young lady next to me and Pastor Bird. We love on her. We just gave her encouraging words. We met some of the people there. We met with HPD. We put unity back in community. Because this is not the Taliban. The Taliban is in the heaven. And the very is like, come on, man. I think it's practical. That's why when they talk in Halloween, talk in trouble, and people get pissed off on DHHL land, we call God first. And then after God, we mobilize it in this W. You got people around the door in there. No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If you want to pick that jurisdiction, we cannot just be on Sundays. We got to be every day, all day, all over the place. We go where there's darkness. Again, they can see our representatives, they see Eli, uh, Jody, and we are out there bringing the unity together, praying God's peace and blessing, giving a prophetic word, uh, and taking back jurisdiction. Uh, one week later, we heard there's going to be a big late party. Somebody's husband was going to be at a crossbow and shoot somebody in the military. If somebody didn't, didn't do anything, we mobilized our NSW. We went out there, and that was a picture on the, on the bottom. Uncle was so blessed, and our men out there, and so forth. And we even showed up yesterday because it's unacceptable people coming to our community, pushing on a state uh, senator in our community. I was ticked when I found that out. I was ticked. I got a little bit angry. And I pray this, the next time they have something, I will be right there. And so yesterday, I was up there, up the, uh, some of our people, the picture on top, meeting with the representative, blessing them, thanking them for supporting our representative, being up there. I was one of the best Catholics at all. Why? Because the ecclesia is a right and the ecclesia is going to have to go over We go up there and love, and we neutralize, and we tell the devil, you have no jurisdiction here because the love of God is here. God has See how because of that, you can start taking that territory. And, and, and what about this Democrat stuff? And this whole day that's driving people nuts. Hey, listen, I don't agree with the governor on everything that he does, but I tell you what, I love him. I love him. I pray for him. I pray for my family. He knows that. His staff knows that. The lieutenant governor, when I found out that some organization, that the individual that claimed to be Christians, and but in his life that morning, I asked God, God, I, pray, I went to God, I prayed for him, I said, you know, I talked to his rep, Eli, can you give me his number? I, I reached out to him that morning. I said, LG, this is Pastor Alan Cardenas from NPC and I want to know, I love you, I'm praying for you and your family. He texted me right back, thank you, because my life was threatened. Uh, they threatened me in my life, I said, that's why I'm reaching out, I just want to let you know, I pray that God will bless you. I don't agree with these politicians, and we don't have to agree, we don't have to approve of them, but we have to love them. Does it make sense? But we got to let them know. we got to let them know. We take back authority when we can be able to connect with people different and difficult and extend, what's that word again? G-R-A-C-E. Huh? Oh, okay. That's that word again. Grace. We extend grace. Right? So that the hearers will be edified, the hearers will be encouraged, the hearers will be comforted, the hearers will be strengthened, and, and grace will flow. That's how we neutralize the devil. So I'm not just preaching this, I'm learning it and I'm living it out. This whole PVT issue, I didn't want to touch it with a 10 foot pole, I didn't want to get near it. I told I, I tell our representative, I don't like getting involved with the vaccination, I don't like getting involved with this, I don't like getting involved with that. And then she called. <laughs> but God's using them. And I see God's hand. But I see my responsibility. No, it's ripped apart on the board and threats and police department calls. Like, oh, and then the point people calling. Oh. So I went out, I talked to all 
other different, there's a bunch of different people. Hey, come on, thanks for coming on. It's very happy. Very happy. Let's put unity back in community. Let's come together. Oh, we don't hate each other. Let's come to the video. You have to read the video. You have to. Well, that wasn't me. <laughs> do I love them? I said, did you tell them? No. Okay, sit so down. We'll bring them safe place. Let me see. So that's Sunday morning service. Let's see. Everybody come. And we'll have this situation. And there it is right there. And I took responsibility because the problem in our community is not a political problem. It's not a neighborhood or problem. It's a spiritual problem. I learned on my knees because I wasn't being the leader that God wanted to be in the community. And I asked God for forgiveness. I mean, Omar was next to me and we took a and something broke. Something broke that day when that reconciliation. So you see the application of this being played out. Now think about this. Where do you disagree the strongest? Is it is it in a family part? We can think about the divine. Is it in your marriage? Is it in your family? Is it with the church? Is it with the marketplace? Is it with the, where where do you disagree the strongest? Where do you push back the most? Where do you work the most in regards to the different areas? Because then we need that that's the question. Are you giving them to deal with jurisdiction? In that area where you disagree, push back in her And then so I, I want to pray, but I want you to be real right now. Be real. Because right now I just want to do a prophetic act that will cancel that out. But you gotta be honest. You gotta be honest. So you have to get in the devil uh, room because of anger. Has unity been breached in your family, in the workplace, with politics? politicians and so forth. And are you going to trust God with all your heart? And I want to close with this powerful, amazing application. Check out this motorcycle. You've probably seen it out there, but this motorcycle was stolen. And uh, I asked permission to share this story. And this is this is a story from one of our brothers here in NBC that's here today. This is a text message that he sent, and I'm going to read it. So I'll be with this up there. He said, I had an eye infection, so I was unable to ride my motorcycle home from a friend's house. So I left overnight on the street. I came back the next day and it was stolen. I felt hurt, but I figured it was what it was. It was what it was. And as, as I was with a friend the next day driving past Mighty Beach, I noticed my bike was in a parking lot and it was being ridden by some guy. We confronted and chased him into Makaha. He got away because the bike was too fast and he drove on the side of the road to get to traffic. I was furious and filled with rage. I went home and got my handgun and started patrolling my car with a friend. After posting what happened on Facebook, a person reported to us that the neighbor had the bike parked in the garage. We confronted the thief at the home and recovered the bike with police. I had my gun and had been holding on to the hurt and hatred for the wrong that the thief had done. On confrontation, the thief held a child. On, oh, on confronting the thief, held a child. I told myself I would be back for vengeance when he was alone. Because I guess he was holding a child. Since the incident, in my heart, really heavy, uh, I hit him at his weakness. And he says, My relationship with my wife was suffering because I was telling her to find a new husband because I was going to kill this man and kill myself. My relationship with the Lord had suffered as well because I thought this vengeance was worth my salvation. This was just a few weeks ago. Then I met Brother Timmy who convinced me to reconnect with God and attend his church. Slowly I opened my heart to the Lord and did my research as to what the Lord wanted me to do. He wants me to like him, offer mercy and forgiveness. Because who am I to expect mercy and forgiveness from the Lord and not be able to dish it out to my fellow man? Oh. I later, and then, so that was the first week of the next time I saw him, I was like, wow, so how's it going? He's probably not seeing what he's going to eat. And I'm sure it would be good. He said, later, I said, Pastor, I saw a guy. What? Pastor, I saw a guy. I saw a guy from Ryan. And I held the whole door open. He was right there. What'd you do? And here's the story. As I looked at him, 
him, I felt anger return and determined through my body. I remembered all the hurt he had caused me. I asked him why he stole my bike, and he said he didn't, of which he threw me more. My hands started shaking, and I knew I was on the verge of hurting this man. In that moment, I thought about how early I had just thought about what God wanted me to do. In that moment, having faith in difficult times, he remembered what God told him to do. And he said this, my lips move on impulse. And I told him, it's okay. I forgive you. In the moment, I said that I felt as if I struck up all the demons and me. Talk about jurisdiction. Talk about the practical application of this message. Then the man said, if I were you, I wouldn't have the strength to forgive me. I told him, I'll pray for you. Bye. I walked into the right. I walked into the right on the park store and had to calm my nerves. I was filled with overwhelming relief. No more was I going to let hatred consume me. I thought about the servant from last week. Faith in tough times. In my time of weakness, tough times, the Lord's strength was shown to me. And because of all of this, I asked God, of all the motorcycles, why mine? Before this, he asked the Lord, why are all these motorcycles? Now I know why. So that the Lord could teach me mercy, forgiveness, and to always have faith, even when you feel you have no way out.
Y'all need not on his understanding, but trust the Lord. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, good dude. Would you guys come up? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just, you know, you guys, you didn't have moments. You know, we stand together. We better together. We're struggling together. Just come as we pray for our family. You guys have been a tremendous blessing. Um, just extend our hands out because you guys are proficient and you guys are living it out. And so forth. come on, man. Put your hands together. These guys are reset and reset God in their meeting. So let's extend our hands and pray God's blessing upon the church here today. So Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this amazing story. Thank you for this teaching, how relevant it is for us today. Um, and Lord, yeah, we pray all of us have issues and, and we confess that, yeah. After today's teaching, we've given a little jurisdiction uh, over our families, our workplaces, uh, um, our hearts when we watch TV, and we get angry, and, and, and Lord God, no more, no more. So Lord God, we want a spiritual reset. We, we pray that you would help us and wash us clean. Help us to be like Brother Alika, Brother Timmy. Help us to be like them, that those who meant to hurt us, we can bless them, not blast them. Be peacemakers, not troublemakers. Um, speak prophetically, not pathetically. Look for the church in them, not the trash in them. But Lord God, our heart, reset our heart today. Father, help us to live out the word. Help us to take back jurisdiction of our heart uh, and take back jurisdiction from the devil. And from there, out of there, out of love, out of love, fill our heart with love as you reset us. Then we can move forward with reconciliation those who have hurt us, use us, and so forth. So, Father, we just pray. Bless NPC. Bless all of us here today. Bless those at home, Lord God. We just pray for a washing, a cleansing, so we can rise and shine and be your ecclesia. But, Lord God, we pray that you remove the hurts, the habits, and the hang-ups that we've been carrying around and have been given the devil jurisdiction. We just cancel that here and now because of your blood in us, your grace. We pray that your grace would flow through our veins, fill our hearts here and now, and out of our hearts and our veins and our mouth, that grace will flow, that the words that we speak will be only that which will be edified, so that grace will go forth to those that hurt us. So we pray for that. And Lord God, we just pray that you would just release the bondage and the slavery that we've been living, we've been living in, and that we'll be free. Free at last, free at last. God Almighty, as we reset today, that we'll be free at last. We pray for that here and now. So, Lord God, we thank you for this new heart. We thank you for the new reset. We thank you for the new creation we are in Christ Jesus. We're becoming more and more like you. Less of us, less of the world, and more like Jesus. So, Jesus, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for watching us, blessing us, extending your grace. We thank you for the spiritual, relational, a moral, a mental reset in all our life from head to toe, from inside out. So, Lord God, now, 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 we pray that you use us to go out there and live out the Word of God in such a way that the world will know that we're no longer the same, but we're different. Give us, uh, uh, don't give us a, uh, just doubt, but fill our hearts and with vision, with passion to go out there and to live Allah, love Allah, share Allah, and as we do that, the world will be a better place. So we thank you for this day of reset. Now help us to walk that live it out. In Jesus' name we pray. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thanks, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. All right. Put your hands together for me, my man. Hallelujah. All right. All right.
area. 